हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा सो डियर डिवोटीज ऑफ भक्ति सेंटर न्यूयॉर्क आई एम शेयरिंग माय स्क्रीन वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग आवर स्टडी ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम and we are in the 10th canto chapter 6 entitled the killing of putana and we are going to read verses 9 10 11 12 and 13 i believe so verse number 9 shila shukdev goswami is describing how lord krishna killed the demoness putana tam tikshna chittam ativam cheshtitam विक्षातरा कोश परिछदिवत् वर स्त्रि तत्भया च दर्शि निरीक्षे जननी अतिष्ठता ट्रांसलेशन एंड पर्पोर्ट्स बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस अभय चरण अरविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज शिल प्रभुपाद ट्रांसलेशन पूतना राक्षसी इज हार्ट was fierce and cruel but she looked like a very affectionate mother hare krishna looks can be deceptive my dear friends we see in this world looks can be deceptive we cannot judge a book by its cover we see so many cruel people in this world they may be terrorists they may be mass shooters they enter a public place looking like ordinary citizens they may have a simple backpack but actually they are the boston bombers in the marathon they may enter with just a bag in their hand in a school and they are actually cruel shooters who are going to shoot helpless kids we see it all the time in this world people posing as friends but they are very cruel and they represent putana putana rakshasi's heart was fierce and cruel but she looked like a very affectionate mother thus she resembled a sharp sword in a soft sheath although seeing her within the room mother yashoda and mother rohini overwhelmed by her beauty did not stop her but remained silent because she treated the child krishna just like a mother you see shrimad bhagavatam is teaching us that we humans sometimes may be cheated by looks we may be deceived by looks but krishna cannot be cheated we can cheat the whole world but we cannot cheat krishna purport by shila prabhupad although putana was an outsider and although she personified fierce death because the determination within her heart was to kill the child when she directly came and placed the child on her lap to offer the child her breast to suck the mothers were so captivated by her beauty that they did not prohibit her sometimes a beautiful woman is dangerous because everyone being captivated by external beauty maya mohita is unable to understand what is in her mind those who are captivated by the beauty of the external energy are called maya mohita mohitam na abhijananti mam ebhya paramavyayam bhagavad gita 7.13 nate vidhu shartha gatim hi vishnum durashaya ye bahirartha maninah bhagavatam 7.5.31 teachings of shri prahlad maharaj here of course the two mothers rohini and yashoda were not maya mohit they were not deluded by the external energy of krishna but to develop the past times of the lord for the sake of krishna leela they were captivated by yoga maya such maya moha is the action of yoga maya when it affects the pure devotees like mother yashoda and rohini devi it is the act of krishna's yoga maya not mahamaya mahamaya affects the um, 
conditioned souls like us in this material world. Krishna has two energies. Yoga Maya is the internal potency through which all his pastimes manifest. And the external energy is called Mahamaya. Verse number 10. Tasmin stanam dur jaraviryam ulbanam ghorankam adaya shishor dadavatha gadam karabhyam bhagavan prapidyata pranay samam rosha saman vitopibat. On that very spot, the fiercely dangerous Rakshasi Putana took baby Krishna on her lap and pushed her breast into his mouth. The nipple of her breast was smeared with a dangerous, immediately effective poison. But the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, becoming very angry at her, took hold of her breast, squeezed it very hard with both hands and sucked out both the poison and her life. Hare Krishna. The breast of a mother is the source of life for a baby. But Putana was so cruel that she took the form of the most merciful mother. Everyone trusts one's mother. And Putana took the form of a nurse and she came to feed baby Krishna with her love. Apparently, it was an act of love. But actually she wanted to deceive everyone and kill Krishna with the poison. But what did Krishna do? Krishna got angry at her. Why Krishna got angry at her? Because she had cheated Yashoda Maya and Rohini Mata. He cheated them. She cheated all of them. She cheated the Brajvasis with her beauty. And her intention was very cruel. She wanted to kill Krishna. Therefore Krishna got angry. Krishna does not like this type of deceitfulness and cheating mentality. So Krishna got angry. And what did Krishna do? Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that as people approach me, I reciprocate with them accordingly. So Putana wanted Krishna to suck her breast, to feed from her breast. Krishna did just that. All right, I will do it. And what did Krishna do? He did two things. He sucked the poison out which means he purified Putana. <laughs> we also have so much poison in us. The poison of lust, anger, greed, envy, pride, ego, the tendency to criticize others. We have got all this poison within us. And what will Krishna do? Krishna will remove all that poison. He will purify us. Cheto darpana marjanam. Just by chanting the holy name of Krishna, we will become purified. Cheto darpana marjanam bhava mahadavagni nirvapanam sarvatma snapanam param vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam we will become purified by chanting krishna nam the holy name of krishna so krishna removed the poison first purified her and then took her life also which means he took her to his eternal abode yad gatvana nivartante tad dhama paramam mama he took putana to his supreme abode purport Lord Krishna was not angry at Putana for his own sake. Rather, he was angry because the Rakshasi had killed so many small children in Vrajbhumi. Putana was a serial killer. And she used to kill little children. She was very cruel. She specialized in killing children who are very helpless and innocent. Because she had killed so many other children, Krishna was angry. Therefore, Krishna decided that he should uh, punish Putana by, uh, she should be punished by having to forfeit her own life. Because she had killed, so Krishna decided to give her the capital punishment. Verse 11. Samuncha munchalam iti prabhashini nishpidyamana khila jeeva marmani vivritya netre charanau bhujau muhu Unbearably pressed in every vital point, the demon Putana began to cry, Please leave me, leave me. Suck my breast no longer, leave me. Perspiring, her eyes wide open, 
and her arms and legs flailing she cried very loudly again and again see krishna can compress all the punishment into just few moments putana had killed so many innocent children so by the laws of karma she was supposed to suffer for millions of lifetimes but krishna is so merciful that he gave her all that pain all that suffering all that punishment all that purification but in just a matter of few moments to purify her just see how much pain she is undergoing leave me leave me she is crying she is perspiring her eyes are wide open arms and legs are flailing she is crying loudly again and again purport the rakshasi was severely punished by krishna so we should not think that oh putana she went back to the spiritual world she she did not suffer for her sins no law of karma affects all of us as it is said in the holy bible by jesus christ as you sow so shall you reap as we uh, perform actions in this world we will get the reaction accordingly it is just the law it is krishna's law we will be punished if we commit sinful activities therefore intelligent person is he who learns by reading the revealed scriptures and avoids sinful activities and performs spiritual activity so that our future is bright think think about our life all of us work and all of us have a salary when we get our salary every other friday or every week or every month whatever the frequency is when we get our paycheck do we spend all the money no we save for the future we have a saving account we have some investments um, we we plan for our retirement we have 401k and things like that why do we save because we are thinking about our future we want to secure our future financially we don't want to run out of money because we know we are not going to be able to work all our life and we want to retire <laughs> you want to retire and do more bhajan isn't it you all want to chant 64 rounds some day now we don't have time because of work but some day you want to be retired and just associate with devotees and make garlands for radha murli dhar and uh, chant 64 rounds to instead of just thursday kirtan we want to do kirtan every day with devotees so you are planning all that and for that we are saving for the future so similarly my dear friend just like we save for our future we have to think about our spiritual future also not just future in this life but what about our future in the afterlife we have to plan for that and the planning is this our chanting our devotional activities we are planning for our next life that is krishna consciousness the rakshasi was severely punished by krishna she threw her arms and legs about and krishna also began to kick her with his legs to punish her properly for her mischievous sinful activities hare krishna verse number 12 तस्यास्वेनेतिगभीरसाद्रेर्मीद्यौश्चाल सग्रहा रिश्च प्रतिरे जना पेतुक्षित वज्र निपात शंकया as putana screamed loudly and forcefully the earth with its mountains and outer space with its planets they all trembled the lower planets and all directions vibrated and people fell down fearing that thunderbolts were falling upon them this is what happens when demons demoniac people evil people are agitated they create disturbance everywhere purport Shri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur remarks that in this verse the word rasa refers to the planetary systems below the earth such as rasa tala atala vitala sutala tala tala so we have to go to verse number 13 okay so last verse for today verse number 13 <clears throat> nishacharitham vyathita stana vyasur 
व्यादाय क्षेमाश्चरणी प्रसार्य गोष्ठे निज रूपमास्थिता वज्राहतो वृत्र इवापतृप In this way, the demon Putana very much aggrieved because her breast was being attacked by Krishna lost her life. O King Parikshit, opening her mouth wide and spreading her arms and legs and hair, she fell down in the pasturing ground in her original form as a Rakshasi, just as Vritrasur had fallen when killed by the thunderbolt of Indra. Purport. Putana was a great rakshasi who knew the art of covering her original form by mystic power but when she was killed her mystic power could not hide her and she appeared in her original form hare krishna <clears throat> end of purport so here shila shukdev goswami is comparing the killing of putana to the killing of vritrasur one may question that vritrasur was a great devotee previously he was chitraketu maharaj then why shukdev goswami is comparing the killing of putana to vritrasur actually the comparison is very appropriate yes vritrasur was maharaj chitraketu a great devotee in his previous life but so was putana putana also it is said it is described in garga samhita that putana was a relative of bali maharaj and when she saw vamana dev the young boy brahman boy who had come to beg charity she developed maternal feelings motherly feelings for little vamana dev but when she saw that vamana dev grew in size as trivikram upendra and he uh, took away everything from bali maharaj then she developed some inimical feelings towards lord vamana dev why is he doing this she got angry at vamana dev so she had both the feelings she had motherly feelings for some time and then she had inimical envious feelings towards lord vamana dev therefore in her next life she became putana and krishna by sucking out the poison removed all the vices in her heart all the bad qualities in her and made her purified and then putana also went back to godhead just like vritrasur went back to godhead so the analogy is very apt so here we see how putana she attacked krishna with her poison but krishna counteracted the poison neutralized the poison and purified putana and then gave her the highest destination aho bakiyam stana kal kutam the beautiful verses there uddhav is glorifying krishna who can be as merciful as krishna someone came to kill him harm him and krishna gave her the highest destination made her his own mother dhatri his own mother in golok vrindavan this is the mercy of the supreme lord krishna has no fear from any weapon krishna has no fear from any poison and krishna's devotees also do not have fear from any poison in this regard i would like to tell you one story from mahabharat duryodhan wanted to kill bhim why because both of them were very powerful so he had special envy for bhim he didn't bother so much about yudhishthir arjun nakul sahadev but he was very envious of bhim why because both of them were wrestlers both of them had their weapon as gada the mace therefore he was envious and this is very instructive for all of us my dear friends even in our bhakti sometimes we become envious of each other if someone speaks hari katha likes to speak hari katha give lectures spiritual talks that person may not be envious of someone who is a pujari in the temple or may not be envious of someone who sings kirtan or may not be envious of someone who distributes books but that person is very likely to be envious of someone who speaks hari katha you see we see others as our competitors a speaker of hari katha may become envious of someone who speaks hari katha someone who is very good at playing mridang may get envious of someone else who plays mridang also because they look at each other as competitors but this is a materialistic mentality and we should give it up this is not pleasing to krishna a devotee is nirmatsaro a devotee is completely non envious we should never envy others 
but the risk is there that we may be envious of people devotees who are in the same service who are in the same service so duryodhan was very envious of bhim he called him for lunch one day alone without his four brothers and poisoned him and he put enough poison to kill 100 people and bhim was just a young boy bhim simply fell asleep with that poison he he got sedated he did not die he got sedated but the poison affected him when he was unconscious duryodhan dushasan and the brothers they picked him up and they threw him in the river so that he will drown and die in his sedated condition but krishna previously had taken a vow that i will protect my devotees kaunteya pratijani hi name bhakta pranashati the pandavas from their birth they were under the protection of krishna one may not see krishna one may not hear krishna but krishna's protection is always there with the devotees all we have to do is simply chant the name and be in the association of devotees hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare by krishna's arrangement bhim was taken to the palace of varun dev who is the king who is the lord the demigod responsible for all the water bodies so he went to the kingdom of varun dev and there varun dev immediately recognized him as one of the descendants of kuru in the dynasty of kuru so he immediately recognized him and one of the associates of varun dev was the great 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 grandfather of bhim so he said oh this is my vamsha ji this is a descendant in my dynasty so please varun dev give him some gifts give him some gifts but before that what happened when he came uh, to the to the um, the kingdom underwater some underwater snakes poisonous snakes some water snakes are more poisonous than even uh, cobra this is a fact some water snakes are extremely poisonous so some poisonous snakes they bit bhim and bhim was already poisoned and when the snakes bit him the poison of the snakes neutralized the poison that duryodhan had fed him this is the origin of homeopathy <laughs> that uh, like poison neutralizes like poison so this is the origin of homeopathy so the poison was neutralized and bhim his sedation was gone he was wide awake and completely lucid and varun dev says i want to give you some benedictions so he said i have got these pots of poison uh, pots of nectar that can neutralize all poison in the future no poison will affect you and you will get tremendous strength bhim said how much strength will i get bhim was very interested in all these things how much strength will i get varun dev said well each pot can give you the strength of um 1000 elephants see nowadays we measure strength in horsepower oh i have got a 300 horsepower car <laughs> we measure power in terms of horsepower that is kaliyug but in the previous ages they used to people are more powerful they would measure their strength in terms of elephant power <laughs> so varun dev said each pot can give you the strength of 1000 elephants so bhim took one pot drank it took the second pot drank it in this way there were eight pots and bhim drank all eight pots he knew that in the future he has to fight the evil people in this world like duryodhan and dushasan he is going to need a lot of strength so he drank eight pots of water he got the strength of 8000 elephants and mahabharat describes that from his since his birth bhim was very powerful he already had the strength of 2000 elephants and now he got 8000 elephant strength so bhim had the strength of 10000 elephants and then he got nice silk clothes and golden jewels and necklaces he was offered great respect and then he was sent back and here duryodhan tried to kill bhim and bhim came back wearing nice new clothes and jewels and his strength had increased much more from 2000 elephant strength now he had 10000 elephant strength so this is what happens when we try to harm devotees when we envy devotees we are simply spoiling our own future we are putting our own future in jeopardy ravan tried to burn the tail of hanuman and what happened did hanuman ji get affected not at all but what happened to ravan's lanka it got burnt <laughs> he put a little fire on hanuman's tail and his entire lanka got burnt this is what happens when we commit vaishnava aparadha so we should be very careful we should love the devotees we should serve the devotees and we should always be in the association of devotees shri pad ramanuja acharya a great acharya p 
people were very envious of him because he was preaching pure devotion and he was gathering so many followers so very envious person called yadav prakash who was a mayavadi he was extremely envious of shripad ramanujachari one day he invited him to drink charanamrut he was working as a pujari in the temple and he took charanamrut and mixed deadly poison just like putana yadav prakash mixed deadly poison in that charanamrut and gave it to ramanujacharya and ramanujacharya's nephew govinda he knew about this conspiracy so he whispered in ramanujacharya's ears don't drink that charanamrut it has got deadly poison mixed in it now shripad ramanujacharya was in a very great dilemma dharma sankat this is the charanamrut of lord narayan this water has bathed lord narayan it is such a holy water i must drink it and honor it there are different articles of the supreme lord that we have to honor differently krishna's name we honor by chanting and hearing krishna katha we honor by speaking it and hearing it krishna's flowers and garlands we honor by smelling them krishna's tulsi offered to his lotus feet we honor it by smelling it and tasting it and charanamrut we honor by drinking it and krishna's remnants krishna's uchishtha is mahaprasad we honor by eating it so in this way in different ways we honor the different aspects of krishna's mercy and charanamrut has to be honored by drinking it how do i honor it by drinking it? there is poison in it shripad ramanujacharya said i have there are two things that can happen either i i can honor the charanamrit and i will die or i can dishonor the charanamrit and i can live shripad ramanuja said no i would rather honor the charanamrit of lord narayan than disregard it so he took the charanamrit knowing that it has poison he drank it yadav prakash gave it second time shripad ramanuja drank it yadav prakash gave it third time shripad ramanuja drank it three times he drank charanamrit and all throughout he was chanting the name of lord narayan lord narayan 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 and because he was chanting the name of narayan lord narayan protected and the poisonous the poisoned charanamrut had absolutely no effect on shri pad ramanujacharya we see in shrimad bhagavatam even lord shankar shankar bhagwan there was the halahal poison the most deadly poison and the whole world was going to be destroyed by it and when lord vishnu said lord hari said that um, my dear shiv ji please protect everyone shankar bhagwan drank the poison and the poison remained in his neck and his neck became bluish black and he is called nilakantha or kalakantha he is glorified like that our acharya say why did the poison remain in the throat our acharya say because in his mouth he is always chanting the name of krishna 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 ram ram and in his heart there is always the presence of krishna so in the heart there is krishna in his mouth there is krishna so the poison remained in the center completely neutralized could not affect shankar bhagwan shripad ramanujacharya had a very great devotee his name was anantacharya and shripad anantacharya on the orders of shripad ramanujacharya he went from um shri rangam to tirupati we all know tirupati lord venkateshwar tirupati balaji so it was a desire of shripad ramanujacharya that some disciple should go to tirupati because it was a forest area and live on the mountain there and make flower garlands for balaji and tulsi garlands for balaji every day lord venkateshwar so nobody was willing to leave the association of shripad ramanujacharya no one was willing to leave shri rangam but one disciple agreed it was anantacharya he said gurudev if it is your order today only i will go shripad ramanacharya said in one of his bhagavatam classes that tirupati is pushpa mandap it is a place where lord venkateshwar should be worshiped with flowers it is my desire that at least one of my disciple should go there and stay there are no facilities there there is no association there but should stay there cultivate a garden of tulsi and beautiful flowers fragrant flowers and every day offer one big flower garland to lord venkateshwar and one tulsi garland to lord venkateshwar is there anyone among you who can do that and nobody stood up shri shri anantacharya stood up he said gurudev i will go today if it is your desire shri padaramanacharya so happy he embraced him he said my dear anantacharya 
I wish you all success, and may you always be engaged in the service of Lord Venkateshwar. Anantesh Ananta Charya went from Sri Rangam to Tirupati, and stayed there. He cultivated a garden of flowers and tulsi, and every day he would sit. After finishing his chanting, after finishing his rounds, he would sit down, and for hours he would. He had cultivated a beautiful garden with beautiful, fragrant, colorful flowers, mogra, lily. jasmine all these different different flowers roses lotuses and he would make the most beautiful fragrant garland for lord venkateshwar big garland all alone he would sit and make it would take him hours to do it and then he would take tulsi manjari his tulsi leaves and make another huge thick fragrant gar- garland of tulsi leaves and manjaris and he would offer every day one flower garland and one tulsi garland to lord venkateshwar this was his service his gurudev shri pad ramanand acharya had given him this service anand acharya did this every day <coughs> one day in the garden as he was plucking the flowers a cobra bit him on his leg a po- king cobra is the most poisonous snake my dear friends in india a king cobra bit him by this time shri anand acharya had disciples he had followers who were living with him and they saw what happened and they were aghast oh what has happened now king cobra has has bitten gurudev now gurudev must go to some vaidya some doctor to get some treatment and they told ananta acharya ananta acharya quickly let us take you we are living on this remote mountain let us take you down to the village where some vaidya some doctor can treat you immediately let's go it is said that the poison of king cobra can be fatal within as little as 30 minutes let's not waste time let's go quickly gurudev please let's go who said no 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 this is my time to make flower garlands now for the next 4 hours i am busy 2 hours to make flower garland 2 hours to make tulsi garland after that we will see now it is my seva time so he put the big cloth on the ground kept the flowers in a heap kept the tulsi leaves and manjaris in a heap took his needle and thread and did achaman and sat down <laughs> to make his flower garden that was his daily seva four or five hours he would sit just meditating which color should go where which flower should go where how it should be very soft and nice so lord balaji will feel very happy he was making making those garlands and the disciples were crying what's going on what will happen to gurudev they went and they complained to lord balaji <laughs> they complained to lord venkateshwar that our gurudev has been bitten by a poisonous snake but he is not taking treatment please do something please do something they were praying helplessly in the meantime ananta acharya finished making the garlands the flower garland and the tulsi garland and he entered the temple hall and with great devotion he offered the flower garland to lord venkateshwar then he took the tulsi garland and he offered the tulsi gar- tulsi mala to lord venkateshwar and he offered his obeisances at that time Lord Venkateshwar spoke to Ananta Acharya. He said, "Ananta Acharya, I have kept you alive for the last five hours. You were supposed to die within thirty minutes because of that poison. This is very irresponsible behavior. You were bitten by the poison of the snake, and you did not take any treatment. You are putting me in anxiety. You are putting your disciples in anxiety. You are putting everyone in anxiety. This is not good. You should take care of your health. There is poison in you. Go and take treatment." Now look at the heart of a devotee. Ananta Acharya told Lord Venkateshwar, "Which poison are you talking about? Which poison are you talking about? There is so much poison in my heart already since innumerable births. The poison of lust, the poison of anger, the poison of greed, the poison of envy. It's there in my heart. Not just this lifetime. Not just since five hours, but since five million births or more. I have this poison." making flower and tulsi garlands for you as ordered by my gurudev is the treatment of that poison the internal poison i am engaged in the treatment of the internal poison of the six vices in the heart now tell me this poison of the king cobra can affect me in this lifetime but the poison of lust anger greed envy pride false ego illusion is affecting me birth after birth after birth my dear lord venkateshwar now you tell me you are the most intelligent what takes priority is it a priority to treat this poison or should i treat this poison in my leg you tell me i am engaged in the treatment of poison here in the heart so please i don't have time to take care of the poison of the king cobra 
So Lord Venkateshwar was so touched by the sincerity of Anantacharya. He said, but Anantacharya, I need you here. If you die, then who will serve me? Anantacharya replied, he said, if I live, if I survive, I will serve you here. But if by your arrangement, I die because of the snake bite, then no problem. I will come to Vaikuntha and serve you there. But wherever I am, I always want to be engaged in your service. I don't have any other desire. And it is said that Lord Venkateshwar came down and in front of all the disciples, he tightly embraced Anantacharya. He said, you are my very dear devotee. I have already cured the poison because I want you to stay here with me and serve me. This is the power of devotion, my dear friends. Here is Putana trying to kill Krishna. And here is Anantacharya. He has been poisoned by the snake, but he is least bothered because he is engaged in the service of Krishna. This is Bhakti. Bhakti means Srila Prabhupada translated as loving devotional service. Hare Krishna. So let us be aware of the poison that is within us. And the treatment of that poison is Bhakti. The antidote, the anti-venom to this poison of lust, anger, greed is Bhakti. Loving devotional service to Shri Shri Radha Murli Dhar. Krishna through his Murli, he can steal our heart and cure the poison. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Nectar Granthara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Nitai Gaur. Dear, beautiful class, Prabhu. So now we're open it for questions uh, and keep your uh, contributions brief and concise and on point. Uh, Adi Gadadar Prabhu. Let's yes. Go. There's something in the chat from me. Uh, can you read it? Question. Is Krishna consciousness only available after retirement or leaving this body? Srila <clears throat> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur told Abhay Babu, our Prabhupada, 20, 21 year, 20, uh, this is 1922, 26 year old Abhay Babu, that you are an educated young man, you should preach the philosophy of Krishna consciousness all over the world. Prabhupada said, but who will listen? India is under the British Raj. First, we need independence. Prabhu Srila Saraswati Thakur said, Are this independence, this Congress party, BJP party, Republican, Democratic party, independence, dependence, these are temporary things in this material world. They will keep going. Socialism, communism, democracy, they will keep happening. The real deficiency, the real problem in this world is lack of Krishna consciousness. It's an emergency. It is now, right now, right here is the time to become Krishna conscious. Krishna consciousness for everyone. It is the only thing this world needs. George Harrison writes in the beginning of Krishna book, all we need is love. And love is loving devotional services, bhakti. All we need is bhakti. That's it's now and here. Right now, right here. Now is the but time. What about, what about my work? Who's going to do my work? Who's going to pay my bills? I want to make garlands every day, 24 hours, and hang out with Krishna Daya. Prabhu. We have to have a schedule. Disciple means discipline. Yes, we have to work. Yukta ahar viharasya, yukta cheshtasa karmasu. We have to work, we have to earn money, we have to go to the gym, we have to enjoy, we have to hang out with friends. Yes, we have to do all that also. But we have to do it in a Krishna conscious way. And we must have time for self-care. And real self-care means mantra meditation. To sit and two hours in the morning, chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Listen to Srimad Bhagavatam. That way we will be able to work better more efficiently and more effectively. Who can work like Srila Prabhupada at the age of 82, translating, managing 108 temples without internet? <laughs> Prabhupada didn't go to any MBA school. But where is the efficiency coming from? It is coming from his foundation in Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Shai, beautiful answers. Okay, devotees, it's your turn. Let's go. Let's do it. Don't be shy. Unmute yourself. Hemangi, giving us a heart is not a question. Give us a question. You asked a very beautiful question yesterday. Come on now. Oh, sh Samrishta, Samrishta. Samrishta Devi, let's go. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanavat Pranam, Jashna Prabhupada. Prabhuji, um, I know my question is very silly, but still I want to ask, if uh, some snake will bite me, so what should I do that time? You should chant Hare Krishna and go to a doctor. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. <clears throat> but I pray that you don't get bitten by any snake of this world. Hare Krishna.
maybe somebody would like to reflect. Maybe there was a point that uh, stuck with them and that they like. Uh -huh. so, can you hear me okay? Yes, Hare Krishna. Very good point you made about how what we do, we go to the gym, maintain our health, what we do in order to help us do our service is also service, even sleeping or whatever, you know, that maintenance. And you also made a really wonderful point about how uh, we had one Buddhist guest, uh, Master Ching Hai, and she said, uh, when we let her speak, she said, I want to appreciate your guru. Many times people in the advanced stage, they want to sit in the garden and drink tea. They want to just do the relaxing service, but he, he accepted the difficulty because the spiritual master asked him to go across the ocean and give you spiritual knowledge. He said he did not retire into a comfortable, you know, low key activity. And sometimes people ask us, well, where, where, where do you think Prabhupada is now? Right? And people say, well, he's probably in Vrindavan playing with the cowherd boys or something like that. And um, our impression is that Shil Prabhupada went to someplace even darker and more difficult uh, than New York. We can imagine that. And he's going to the front lines. The warrior runs to the sound of the gun. Right? He's not trying to shirk away. He wants to go even to his last breath to serve his spiritual master and that's his satisfaction and that's our safety. Anyway, you made the points, we're just 11. We're going to the Prabhupada Krishna. Wonderful class. I mean, we, we love to hear from you. Thank you so much. I did that, Prabhu. Do you know who Putana was in spiritual world after she got liberated by Krishna? So Srimad Bhagavatam explains that she became a dhatri. Dhatri means she became a friend of Mother Yashoda, uh, assistant of Mother Yashoda. And uh, sometimes she also cooks for Krishna. She also feeds Krishna. So she's like a mother to Krishna. Yashoda Maya has many assistants and Putana became one of them. Is Mother Yashoda aware of what Putana did? Does she tease her? Hmm. <laughs> Once my Guru Maharaj, Srila Radhanath Swami Maharaj said something very wonderful. He said that this material world is like an ocean, right? Samsara Sagar. It's like an ocean of problems, ocean of faults. Kaler Dosha Nidhe Rajan. This whole material world is like an ocean of faults and problems. And we have committed so many sins, so many um, bad things we have done in our life. And Maharaj said that when we take shelter of Krishna and we attain Krishna, the verse is there in Srimad Bhagavatam that samashritaye pada pallava plavam mahat padam punya yasho murare bhavam budhir vatsa padam param padam 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 yad vipadam natesham that this whole bhavam budhi this whole material ocean becomes like the water content in the hoof print of a calf vatsa padam okay so Maharaj said by krishna consciousness the ocean of material existence becomes like water content in the hoof print of a calf but when we go back to godhead Maharaj said that water in the hoof print of a calf evaporates. <laughs> so whatever we have done while we are in the material world, all that is finished. <laughs> there is no more any memory. Nobody is going to make fun. Nobody is going to point fingers. It's all gone. Maharaj says that water evaporates. <laughs> all the struggles you went through, all the fall downs you went through in this world, it will all be finished and gone. Now you are with Krishna. When Gop Kumar reached Krishna in Brihad Bhagavat Amrit, all the struggles he went through, they're all over, finished. Forget it now. Now you're with me. Come, Krishna, embrace him. Hari Bhagavad.